Hello, it's Jim from JustinHacks.com. On today's show, I'm going to show you how to add even more swap memory on your NVIDIA Judson Nano Developer Kit. In recent versions of L4T, NVIDIA has added swap memory as part of the default image. Let's take a look. Let's open up the system monitor. We're on the resources tab. There are two types of memory shown. There's main memory over here on the left. You can see there's 3.9 gigabytes. And we can see a swap memory of 1.9 gigabytes. There are times you may want to change the size of the swap file. For example, if you are compiling a large program. We recently did a video about building OpenCV and we ran out of swap memory during the build. I believe it costs us about an extra hour of build time. We can look at how ZRAM allocates the memory. There's a little utility. It allocates four devices on disk, one for each of the CPUs on the Jetson. You can see that each one's about 500 megabytes or so, total of two gigabytes of swap. At startup, there is a script that allocates that memory. Let's go visit that script. It's over in slash, etc. slash systemd. And it's called nvzram config. This is a pretty simple script. Here's the important line. It takes the total memory, divides it by the number of CPU cores. In our case, that's four. And divides that by two again, and then times 1024, which is a kilobyte. And in our case, we have about four gigabytes of memory. This mem variable becomes about 500 meg. And then it initializes the ZRAM devices and then we turn it into a swap area. One of your options is you can just go in and edit this script directly. You should probably make a backup before you do that. I've created a small script to help us with this task. If you want to use that instead, on the Jetson Hex Nano account on GitHub, there is a repository named Resize Swap Memory. Let's clone that repository. And let's switch over to that repository's directory. Let's look at the associated readme. It tells us about the RAM CTL. It tells us about our important little line we want to change and how to edit it. You will need to use sudo because it is in a system area or we can use the script. So let's do that. Let's set our swap size to be four gigabytes. Password. Note that the swap memory is allocated at startup, so we will need to reboot for the changes to take effect. But we can look at the file. You can see that it has changed. Let's reload it. You can see that the calculation for the mem variable was replaced by a number. The number happens to be one gigabyte. There are four CPUs. Each one gets a gigabyte, four gigabytes in total, as we specified. Let's reboot. Let's open up a terminal and open up a system monitor. You see that we still have the same amount of main memory, which we would expect, but our swap memory has gone from two gigabytes to four gigabytes. Let's take a look at ZRAM CTL. And you can see that each one of these devices is 1000 megabytes, which is a gigabyte. So that's good. I recompiled OpenCV like we did in the last video, and it took about an hour less. Before I did the compile, I set the swap memory to eight gigabytes and things went swimmingly well. Now with a large swap area, you may not get optimal performance. There's all sorts of trade-offs. What you probably want to do after a big job like that is reset it to the two gigabytes that is the default. That's the quick tip for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. And as always, 
Thank you for watching.